Hello, welcome back to Patroma Therapy. We are going to be discussing the cats in our new episode, and our new episode won't have any number specifically. Uh, we'll rather break them down by subject in the future, if that's okay with you. Is it? That sounds great. Um, yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about Ernest Hemingway, a short story called Cat in the Rain. Talk a little bit about synchronicity. So maybe those will be some of our hashtags. We're really happy to have a few new subscribers. I think Teshwan up in Newark is subscribing and Ralphie Boy up in Washington State. And, uh, you know, it's not raining today, but uh, how do you feel about rain in general? I like the rain. I don't know why, but it kind of makes me, puts me into the mood I generally enjoy. Uh, so I am quite positive about weather conditions like you've just mentioned. How about you? Well, for me, <clears throat> the rain is kind of like a cocoon. We have the outside world and the inside world. We have the conscious world, the unconscious world. And when I don't have to go out into the city of Dallas and buzz around or Brooklyn or Portland or wherever I am, when I don't have to go outside, I feel happy just to be inside, maybe to read, have some coffee, have some tea, eat cookies. And right now I'm eating some uh, Walker's Pure Butter Shortbread Round Cookies. So, uh, yeah, I like, I like the idea of a cocoon, just kind of like staying inside and reading and, you know, thinking a little bit about life. This story, Cat in the Rain by Ernest Hemingway, is very descriptive. He talks about a couple, two Americans that go to Italy and, you know, they're in their hotel room and the woman's looking out of the window. So there's a lot of back and forth in the story between inside and outside. How long ago did you find this story or when did you start getting interested in Cat in the Rain? I come across the Hemingway book, uh, short stories, and that's what the shortest, I think. Uh, I love short stories because you can read them through very fast and very quick. And uh, when I read it, I liked it for no apparent reason. And I liked it, maybe, although I said that for no apparent reason, but maybe because it was more about relationships between husband and wife than about the cat outside in the rain. But right. I'm not to change the subject, but do you think cats love to be, uh, a cat's okay outside in the rain? Are you okay outside in the rain? No. Cats, cats like to... Cats, cats okay I know, outside I know. in the rain? I'm asking you rhetorically, do you like to be standing outside in the rain? No. You like oh, like that's to be a under... rhetorical question. Yeah. No, I no. I, like I Also, if it's warm and uh, nice, I, I, I would love to be uh, standing outside in the rain. But, you know... Rains are always cold, unless you're somewhere in the jungle, maybe. Well, you know, um, I would say that maybe cats like to be under a little table or to be under a fence area or under the a deck, you know, on, on a house and kind of look out at look out at the rain. I I like the way uh, Hemingway describes and kind of introduces this scene with a, a lot of description. You know, he talks about it was raining, the rain dripped from the palm trees, water stood in pools on the gravel paths. So, you know, he invites us into the scene, and the scene is about relationship. There is a man reading on the bed, and a woman just kind of looking out at the window, and the cat becomes this point through which Hemingway creates this story about the relationship between the, the husband and the wife. And she's sitting there kind of touching the back of her neck. I believe the story was probably set um, in a time when women were wearing you know, short bob haircuts. And she's saying, you know, I'm tired of this haircut. And he says, well, you know, it looks great to me. And he's kind of not really paying attention to her. You know, he's reading his book and she's kind of a little bit frustrated and pacing around the room. And I see the room as kind of a, 
a metaphor for their their relationship that you know they're in this relationship together but she kind of wants to get out and by out she says in the story you know you know i want to grow my hair long again you know i wish we i had my own table you know i'd, I'd love to have some candles on the table and I, you know, I want my own silverware and he's just being oblivious like well you know I'm reading don't bother me and so even times when people are in a relationship a close relationship or love or marriage or friendship I think they don't even listen to each other wow I love what you've just said I just would like comment uh, on one thing though the cat she saw from the window uh, outside in the rain, I mean, that was hiding under the table. And when she went out to catch it, it wasn't there, it disappeared. I don't know where it's gone. But uh, then later on, the Hemingway says that uh, the governess, or I don't know, the assistant, hotel assistant, maid, how do you maid, call it? Yeah. Maid, yeah, they She's brought like the, the cat helper again. at the hotel. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if that was the same cat the woman saw in the window. And uh, that's what bugs me after having read this. Well, I mean, it's Do because you you're an accountant. You're an accountant. You're an accountant, and you you want everything to add up. <laughs> Details are very important, exactly. You, but you know, but I I think what's important is that she has this desire. Hemingway is writing about the woman's desire, and what happens at the end of the story, it's truncated or cut off really, really sharply. She goes out, tries to find the cat, the cat's gone. There is a benevolent innkeeper at the hotel who's, who sends the maid out with an umbrella to help her find the, the little kitty under the table. And then somehow the little kitty has like wandered away or something. So this isn't like you know, a documentary, it's a, it's a story, so it's imaginary. So Hemingway has the cat go away someplace where it's just somehow not there. He doesn't say what happened to the cat because the reader is supposed to fill in what they think happened to the, the cat. But she comes back upstairs and, you know, her husband has warned her, don't get wet. And well, you know, she's been in the rain, so she's going to be wet. And then she's just standing there. And then all of a sudden there's, you know, Hemingway writes at the end, George was not listening. He was reading his book. The wife looked out of the window where she, where the light had come on in the square. So there's this moment of illumination. And then suddenly someone knocks at the door. And the husband just announces, Avanti. And he looks up from his book. And then suddenly the maid is standing at the door holding a cat. And then the maid says, excuse me. The padron asked me to bring this for the signora. And then that's the end of the story. So so Hemingway, just, it's kind of a cliffhanger. How did you feel at the very end? The maid is standing there holding a cat. And you just want to know, is it the same cat? <laughs> well, yeah, I, first of all, as I already said, I was wondering if it was the same cat they saw in the window. Second is, Avanti, I don't know what that means. Uh, does and that mean come in? It's in Italian, Avanti. right? Mm. Avanti. Well, you know, someone's knocking at the door, and then someone says, come in. So yeah. he's giving Those the two, woman... Two Americans somehow spoke Italian, I guess, because there are quite a few words in it, in Italian. And also, you mentioned desire, but the woman's desire. The word desire can be good or, or bad, depending on context. And I don't know how do we interpret the woman's desire here. And maybe that cat is uh, more like a symbolism. Uh, I, I'm not sure. Do you think it's kind of a symbol here? Well, you know, she is also the cat. You know, she, she's kind of out. She, the cat, is kind of out exploring and it starts raining. And then she has this husband who doesn't want her to be, doesn't want her to get wet. You know, life is about getting wet. You know, you can't just stay inside all the time. And I think that husbands and wives or people that are in a close relationship don't actually understand that sometimes you just need to be apart. You know, you just need to, like, go away for the weekend or you just need, you know, you're not going to be doing anything, you know, 
anything other than just like being yourself. And so, so this little kitty is her, you know, she has short hair and she keeps kind of touching the back of her neck. And, you know, what she wants to do is she wants to just, you know, sit and just pet this little cat. And I, th I think that that the cat is the woman in the story. Now we don't hear her name. We hear his name. His name is George. And, you know, she keeps, you know, touching the back of her neck and she keeps saying, you know, I just, you know, you won't let me grow my hair out, you know, you know, I don't know what we're doing, you know, can I at least have a cat? And he's just like, and she keeps saying, I want it to be spring. You know, I want to brush my hair out. And just the word spring is about new life. So I see this story as a little bit about an ending. It's it's a little bit about an ending of one part of their relationship. It's like a fab fabulous story. I, I don't know. I don't want to bring bad memories, but I know that you had a cat, and I do have a cat, too. Uh, I, 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 someone sometimes, of course, I stroke her and pet, and uh, I enjoy it, and the cat enjoys it too. Um, she slept next to me yesterday, and uh, I laid awake at night thinking about it and uh, about the story I read and uh, synchronicity, as you say. Synchronicity is a very interesting subject, uh, which can be logically explained. That's what, that's why it's interesting. Well, you know, uh, the the last pet that I, the last cat companion is what they call it here, cat companion. You know, um, lived a long time, and I was uh, renting this house, the d lower duplex, a lower duplex, and. There was some. There were some carbon monoxide leaks in the in the house. It was an older house, and I would always get these headaches. But when I would go away to travel, the headaches would go away. And when I would go away, I would leave the cat with somebody else to watch the cat, and the cat would be fine. But then, I didn't realize that we were both being carbon monoxide poisoned. So, so uh, I moved from there over to where I live now, and I have a very very nice friend, uh, David who uh, kind of lived next door to me in this apartment complex. And this very special cat that I had, you know, ha had been slowly getting carbon and monoxide poisoning. And some people think that, okay, well, you know, when, when someone's sick, you know, don't keep them around real long, just pull the plug and let them die. But I felt like I wanted the cat to die a natural death. And it was winter. So I had the cat with me and I, I was waiting for it to snow and the, I would sit on the couch thinking like my cat is dying, you know, like really hurt me to let go because this cat had been a friend for a long time and been through a lot with me and also slept at the foot of the bed and puttered around, you know, when I would come back from a trip, was so happy to see me. And, you know, cats don't have a past, a memory of the past or the future. They're just kind of in the moment. And I don't know. I like this cat a lot, so when, when, when you say I had to, cat, go ahead. Sorry to interrupt. I, I was just uh, going to say when you say cat companion, I thought you, you mean uh, a playmate for your cat, oh, but but probably you meant uh, the cat. Yeah, the cat. Yeah, the cat's yeah the cat's name was Stuart, like John Stuart Mill, or you know all my cats. Mm -hmm begin with the letter S and have like very philosophical names. So Stuart was named after John Stuart Mill. And so Stuart the cat, like some people say, oh, you have a pet, oh, you have a cat. But some people say, oh, you have a cat companion. So I just had this one cat, Stuart, who had, who had gotten sick and I had taken the cat in for, you know, to get a couple checkups and stuff. And they kept saying, well, you know, we'll, you know, something's wrong. We don't exactly know. So anyhow, the, the cat um, needed to be put down or put to sleep. So very difficultly, I took it to the vet. And then this friend of mine said, well, don't worry. We'll bury it out of, out of my dad's land because it's like a nice big piece of land. So I kept thinking, like, oh, God, you know, death just like sucks. So I was 
the, the cat's body was still at, you know, at the vet. And my friend told me, well, you know, we'll go take it out to my dad, my dad's place. So around that time, some friends were coming over to the area to visit and they were going to go listen to a Fleetwood Mac concert. And I love the song Landslide. And I just remember just being like all wound up about everything. And, and then these friends went off to a concert, which I didn't go to. And then all of a sudden it started snowing and I don't know, like I was inside and it was snowing outside and then I would just play the song Landslide. Anyhow, I ended up burying the cat in, <laughs> in someone else's backyard here in Dallas. But uh, yeah, it was it was a uh, yeah, it was an experience for sure. It was an experience for sure. Have I, you, I was, had yeah. Go ahead. No, I, I was going to say that um, when you um, told me about your experience and um, I listen, but Personally, if I didn't go through the same situation, I could not relate even if I wanted to. But once I've been there too, and uh, y y you tell me how it feels. I, I mean, I look at this from a completely different point of view because I know what you've been through. Uh, for instance, if you had um, buried a cat, which you loved for many, many years, but I didn't have the same experience. I would just, you know, agreed silently and moved on. But uh, if I had a similar experience, that would be totally different for me and for you, maybe. And uh, that makes us closer in such situations when we share it. Yeah, with that's, each other. That's true. Well, you know, I've it been brings sort back of... lots of memories. Well, didn't you have some little cats out on your property that? You would go out there yeah. and feed the cats. Yeah, many, and go back into many. The city. And I took one home, and um, it lives with me now. Uh, it's uh, oh, that, name that's is the same Simona. one. No, there oh. are many. I don't even remember. No, which uh, is the one, one that I told with you, you about? The one now is Simone. Yeah, the one the one uh, I have now was born last year, and uh, in order not to abandon her uh, in the winter. I took her home to my house, is... to my apartment in the city. Uh, yeah, it's called, I gave her a name. I mean, it has many names, but uh, Simona kind of stuck more or less often than others. The, is there any name? Simona, you ever heard that yeah. before? Well, you know, uh, Simon of Cyrene helped Jesus carry the cross. So, so when I think of Simona, I think of Oh, Simon of Serenity. I Sereni, did not know who, that. Oh. But, you know, very chivalrous of you to, to bring the cat home. That's very, yeah. you know, that's very thoughtful. Yeah, and and uh, it brings back a lot of memories. What, what brings back a lot of memories for you? Uh, living? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> you know, we you we know. both need a memory wipe, I know, because memories are kind of hard sometimes and heavy. But well, there are good ones. You know, we wouldn't want to... Well, you know, this topic of synchronicity uh there's a couple people who are who are listening or maybe following us this fellow named uh, martin uh he and i have been talking about synchronicity and also a little bit with tony Carnes and a few other people but synchronicity is when two things happen and they seem to have a kind of embedded meaning that is personal to the person who's experiencing it so synchronicity for me, would be kind of in the back of my mind. I've sort of been thinking of maybe getting a cat for the past, I don't know, three, four months. And then I'll, I'll just be driving along someplace and all of a sudden I'll pause at a stop sign and I'll just look to my left and there'll be a cat sitting under a porch, just like the cat in the rain. And then I kind of mm -hmm. just feel like the cat's looking at me and I keep thinking like, that's crazy, like, it's just a cat. Then I keep driving. Then I would go around the block and come back again closer to the cat. And I would notice the cat would start walking to my car. And I would keep thinking, like, I'm not taking a cat home. And then I just drove off. And that, that happened to me a couple of times. Another time I was parking my car near a fence. And they bulldozed the property next to us because they're building an eight-story mid-rise next to where I live. So... There used to be a lot of wild land back there, and there's a there's a 
a little stream that feeds into White Rock Lake. And so, so there are some animals and creatures down there. So I was just parking two days ago. And all of a sudden, I look at the top of the fence. There's a cat looking at me on the top of this wooden fence. And I kept thinking, no, no, you're not going home with me. You're not going to talk to me. You cannot convince me. I mean, I wasn't speaking. I was just thinking this. And then I just got out of my car and went upstairs. But, but yeah, like synchronicity. Uh, when, when you, when you it, say synchronicity, I immediately start thinking of paranormal, uh, something beyond of our understanding. Yes, but, you know, I think that I have experienced over time that we all have psychic ability because we are not only soma which is body but Tele we are telepathy you mean telepathy yeah yeah. Mm. yeah and and i think that sometimes people think that only new agers or like tarot card readers or jungian analysts have this ability but i think you know, a lot of people sometimes have little messages and dreams or they are thinking about someone and then all of a sudden the person calls oh. them and yeah. Absolutely. And I also, I don't know, read it somewhere or maybe heard, but uh, I'm not sure if my reference would sound correct, but it, it, it went like accidents are not accidental or something like that, uh, which I apply to synchronicity. Because yes. I experienced synchronicity myself. Maybe I told you that I loved Alan Woods lectures. There are many on YouTube. At the time, back then, five years ago, I think, I was yeah. all over it. Uh, he spoke a lot of Carl Jung and his synchronicity theories. Yes. So, yeah, synchronicity, if you break down the word, syn means together and chrono means time. So it's two moments in time that come together in one meaningful shazam. Mm. Have, you, mm. have you had your own experience that seemed to be uh, too mighty to just be coincidence. Well, you know, I think I have told we I have spoken before in some other Patroma therapy episodes about uh, I have a, I love, you know, French literature, Russian literature, Italian literature, uh, Mexican literature. I love literature and art. I love travel. I love collecting things. People know that I love postcards. I just got some really nice postcards from my friend who went to Manhattan. I went and picked those up last night. But, um, you know, right before I met you, like, you were on, you are in a different place than Dallas. I'm in Dallas. But at that time, I was in Houston. And think of all the people in the whole world that are online at one moment in time, you know, looking at art or in a chat room or learning about gardening. There's all these these online lives. And I remember I was opening up this drawer and I looked and I found this lacquered pen that a, a, um, I used to teach at St. Pius the 10th High School. Shout out to St. Pius people. And uh, the, the principal went to Russia and she brought back to her teachers, we were maybe, I don't know, 30 teachers on staff, a little small gift and she had brought back this this pen that was from russia and then also i had a couple other things that were actually from russia that i had kind of stored in this one drawer and i opened up the drawer and i saw that pen and i hadn't seen that pen in years and all of a sudden i felt like the pen was kind of like glowing or something it, it was like it was like a black lacquered pen with a dancer on it and then, like two days later, I suddenly met you. We were talking about art or violins or music or something. And I kept thinking, like, that is so weird. Like, I had a premonition that I was going to meet you. And the pen became sort of like the cat in the rain. The pen is the, you know, the external object. And then, you know, it just kind of unfolded from there. So it was sort of synchronistic how you know you're in one place in the world and i'm in another place in the world and i kind of look at this pen like i didn't make you appear right i'm not a magician mm. 
<laughs> you're real, right? <laughs> I, I know. Yeah. Uh, same with me. I, uh, I, I experience stuff that um, it's not crazy, but um, there are lots of instances where just um, something collide in what seems like complete randomness, right? But you know, yes. it's not. Yes. It's like you have to do, all you have to do is to connect the dots. Uh, and yes. but when you when you connected them, it's like it it's not possible. But still, here we are. True. And and I I was up in New York uh, before the pandemic. I was visiting. Uh, I was visiting up there, and I was getting ready to come back to Dallas, and I just wanted to go into this Whole Foods store and cash a check because I needed some cash to. You know, travel yeah. with. So uh, my daughter, <laughs> my daughter drops me off <clears throat> at this kind of whole, it's a, it's a kind of little shopping center. It has like a little bodega and a wine place and Whole Foods and a stationery store. She goes, I'm not going to park. I don't have time to park. You know, I'm just going to drop you off for 45 minutes. Try not to get into trouble. Because she's a lawyer always warning me, you know, <laughs> always warning me. So I walk in, and I, I, this friend of mine, Leon, who lives here in Dallas, we were thinking of, of buying some property and putting in like a coffee shop on the first floor, having some people come in and play their guitars, then maybe on the second floor I would live, and then maybe on the third floor he would live. And then, you know, we, we would just buy a building. So we were talking about what kind of decor we were going to do or what and so you know, I, was, I was interested in these art deco tiles black and white tiles on the floor so i walk in and i think i was wearing a university of texas sweatshirt t-shirt or something something that would identify me as texas and i walk in i'm just looking at these tiles and i just wander over to this little place and this woman asked me if i'd like a seat and i go no because it was like a, a little bar or club or something and then I decided, well, to shoot the bull with her. And um, I go, hi, well, guess where I'm from? She looks at my shirt. She goes, Texas? I go, uh-huh. She goes, I'm from Texas, too. This woman who was up in Newark, New Jersey, was from Plano, Texas, which is like 20 minutes north of Dallas. And she's standing there, and we're just kind of talking, and I just have this synchronistic feeling like, okay. And then I decide, well, maybe it'd be cool to take a picture together. So I turn to my right, and there's this amazing guy sitting on a little bar stool. He's got great, like, I don't know, like Puma pants on, like really great shoes and like a fabulous smile. I go, hi. Okay, so this was Teshwan, who, who is going to maybe be one of our subscribers. He might be one of our new subscribers. I go, hi. He goes, well, hey there, Tex. So we just make small talk. And... And this was before the pandemic and like Teshwan and I are still friends and he's like an amazing kind of influencer who showcases products and he's in the fashion art world of New York and Newark and I don't know. I mean, and the only thing my daughter told me was, is just try not to get in trouble. Like <laughs> somehow I felt guilty <laughs> getting back hey, in the God, car. God, God bless. Texas and all, but what you mentioned the T-shirt. What is the requirement to identify as a Texan? Oh my goodness, that's another episode. That is another really? episode. We're going to okay, have yeah. to wrap this one up. Right. <laughs> I also I have to get back to work. There is a woman at the door. I think she's a doctor or maybe a lawyer. I don't know. She wants me out. I'm in a conference okay. room. You know. <laughs> a, yeah. If it's Lunch a doctor break. or a lawyer with the, or a woman with her hand on her hip, you better. We're you better all here. I'm an accountant. Uh, I'm surrounded by doctors and lawyers. Yeah. Well, Hate I'm them. sorry. Okay, so this is a. Uh, this was a. Uh, I think this went well. And um, do you want to wrap it up and to tell our listeners yes. how? Well, lucky very they are good. To have well, us? <laughs> well, we're lucky to have our 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 listeners and our That's subscribers what I meant. and. And uh, we hope that some of you will take a look at the story Cat in the Rain by Ernest Hemingway. And another story I really like by Ernest Hemingway is a clean, well-lighted place. So, Ofito Sane, 
Adieu Ach, and see you, see you later. Ciao. Escúchame. 